Hey guys, hope you are all okay today. So in this video, we're going to use the logic analyzer. I've got an LHT00SU1, lots of different variants out there. We're going to connect it into pulse view and we're going to do some timing to see how it can help when coding. And especially when you're trying to do what I'm trying to do at the moment, which is 438, 433 megahertz transmission to see if the data actually got to the other side, i.e. Is it a signal issue or is it my programming issue? We're going to fix that program on the fly and see how the logic analyzer helped to discover what the issue was. Okay, guys, let's just have a quick look what we've got on the bench. Now, I did launch a video, more detailed video about what I've got on the bench today. Yesterday, I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can catch up if you didn't see it. But essentially, in summary, we've got a nano here driving a 433 megahertz transmitter. This transmitter uses pins to detect how many buttons are being pressed or which buttons are being pressed, transmits it over to the receiver, and the nano picks it up. And the reason for developing this <clears throat> is because these particular ones are not very secure. So we're actually sending a rolling code from the, the transmitting nano over to the receiving nano to make sure that it's a it's, it's an authorized device before accepting the, the the transmission what i'm trying to add now is at the moment i've only got one button pressed and the rolling code bit's all working but i'm trying to add the four buttons and allow this to pick it up and it should be easy because it's doing the rolling code it's just another another bit but for some reason it's not working we're going to use the logic analyzer here to find out what the timing is and see if, if it can help in the programming. Let's just have a quick look what, what it's actually doing. So what we can see in the code, if I press the button here, we can see here, so this is the transmitter. This is what the transmitter thinks it's doing. And you can see that it's got a button value of number one, which I've only got one button pressed at the moment, uh, attached at the moment. It's sending the uh, the rolling code and this this is what it is this time and then it's sending it's looking at the bit bits for each of of the four buttons and it's sending the value as one because only one button's pressed this is the receiving side it's got a preamble up here which it accepts this bit's all working it it looks at the code it receives the code and and, and it's actually said that it's 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 actually failed actually that's that's fine uh, because I'm messing around and it will be out out of sync but this is the key part, it's saying the button is zero. So the button value is one, transmitted. On the other side, it's coming up with zero. Now, if we just go back to the bench just quickly, then we can see that we've got our logic analyzer and we've got it attached to the receiving nano. So in fact, whatever we see in pulse view, it's actually what this receiver has picked up and is transmitting to the nano. So the first test is to find out, is the receiver actually picking up the signal to say that we've got one button pressed and it's my coding that's the error? Or is it is it the fact that it's not actually just not making it cross? So it's the transmitter nano that's got a programming error or there's some, something else not quite working. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to first of all use pulse view. And we're going to press the transmitter button and record it in pulse view and have a look to see what's happening. So, okay, so we're back at the computer. We can see we've got the two serial ports here coming up receiver, sorry, transmitter, receiver, and we've got pulse view going. Now, I am got quite a little bit going off here and I'm trying to record also on the same laptop, so hopefully this is going to work. I'm going to click run and I'm going to click the button on the bench and that, and then we're going to be able to see. The transmissions here. Let's just try this. And these stop. I'll hit stop here. Okay, so these are our buttons. So we've got the preamble up here. So this is this bit here. So we've got uh, three preambles, which is correct. Oops, pulse view is gone. Okay, so we've got three preambles here. So we've got 15, 15, and 15, which I, I know is the code. So we've got this is a clock pulse up here, and that's actually being tied from the the LED on the uh, RX. So every time the uh, the RX LED lights up, it means it's received some data. So that's a 15, so this one's worth 8, 4, 2, and 1. 8, 12, 14, 15. 
three lots of those, that's the preamble. Then the first code here, it sends a six, and this is what it's receiving, six, and I've got a four and a two, so this is correct. I've got then a 10, I've got eight and two, so that's a 10. I've got nine, I've got an eight and a one, correct. I've got a, uh, where are we got 12 here, so this is uh, eight and four, 12. Then I've got six, then I've got one, then I've got 10. And this is the button number. Okay, and it's a one. So that tells me at this stage that the receiver has received the one and sent the one to the nano, but the nano is thinking it's a zero. So this probably means I've got some sort of coding issue. So let's just have a look at the code. Okay, so this, this is the RX mode. It counts the preamble, which we know works, so no point looking at that. We know it takes the rolling code, no point looking at that. And it tries to read the pins and get button buttons in here. But what we can see is that whatever it does, it finds a zero here instead of the one. So we're going to use the logic analyzer again to look at the timing of our program. And this here, read pins, we can come to the bottom here, and we've got to read pins. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another one of our digital channels. Digital write. Pin 10. Hi. So when we call this subroutine here as soon as we enter the subroutine we're going to make it go high whether this is whether this is going to be positive or not we don't really care but what we want to do is we want to make sure that before we leave we put it back low so we're going to create almost like a clock pulse for when it's when it's within this code and if it comes here and it drops through for instance it will never go low so it will stay high for the for, for the for the remaining time until it comes back again so that should help us understand our timing and see if it's correct. Okay, so pin 10 on the nano in there. And then on the logic analyzer, the next channel is here. So we plug that into there. Line it back up again. And let's run, run the code again and see what we get with the pulse view. So let's go back to pulse view and try again. Okay, and I think we can see the issue here, almost certainly, because here's the one. And just so we can see, remember that this is the clock pulse. These are the data here. This is our new line we've added on pin 10 of the receiving nano. And each time we call that program, that, that subroutine, we should call it when the data is ready to be read. So if you look here, this is the this is it. We're, we're entering the routine. The light goes, the clock pulse on the RX goes high here. So that's the LED coming on. This is the data being presented on the pins. This is me detecting this. This has gone gone high and jumping into the subroutine, so I can read the data on these pins. But look what happens at, at the end here. We don't wait, we instantly call without waiting for the next to go high. So when it actually reads the reads the pins, they're actually presenting a zero. So let's see if we can fix that. Okay, and if we come back to the code, in fact, actually we can see it straight away. When we do the reading the codes, we're in a while loop and it sits in the while loop until it receives the whole of the seven pins, the whole of the seven codes. And it's constantly checking to see if we've gone live, if the LED pin has gone live. And we haven't got that here. So if I pinch that little bit of code, actually, there, and we drop that in here, for example. Oops. I'm trying to work with a little bit of space here. And then we, uh, da -da -da -da, so we would need to put two more of those there and when we find a pulse we will need to 
update the counter I'm reusing this value which is not good practice but I'm going to reuse that again so now what we're doing is now we're going to loop round and the size of the is always one so I'm going to use that so we start off at zero we do a while until it gets to one if I, if I actually get a sending counter a correct value I shall increase it to one and we'll drop out the while loop okay let's try that so we need to upload that onto the receiving which is number 12 so on the com port 12 so I'll upload that uh, of course spot the silly error I've initialized that variable created that variable more than once so we're just going to initialize it with zero again that's it there you go so we're uploading so if we go back to pulse view let's see if we can get this to work live so we're going to go run that and press a little bit of interference but it has stopped and is it reading when it goes live it is and did I get Ah, I think I might have stopped it too early. Let, let me try that again. Run. Bit of interference on the things. Let's try and grab it again so we can get a successful one. Okay, and we do in fact get the button equals one. We've solved that issue here. We've got some interference issues here. As you see, it takes a little bit of time to shut off because of interference, but that's okay. It could also be my laptop that's struggling because we, we're trying to record too much and do too much with one laptop. But we can see that we're now here and are lined up. And that is why it's now read correctly as a one to give me button pressed one. So I hope that's helped, guys. If you're thinking about getting one of these little uh, logic analyzers, uh, they're really, really useful, especially for things like this, any sort of circuits, really, uh, digital circuits, as I guess. Uh, there was a, I have launched another video on this, well, several videos actually using it as an oscilloscope, showing you how to set up uh, your different USB ports. So you can use Pulse View, or you can use the old, uh, the old software. It's really old. I'm talking like 1980s looking software, but it does make this into like a bit of a, an oscilloscope. I've done, I've done some uh, some videos on that. So look look at the back catalogue. Uh, they are entitled LHT 00S U1, so you'll be able to find them easily. Like I say, setting up different ports because Pulse View isn't compatible with the old oscilloscope software, and you really want Pulse View for doing all the digital stuff. Really, you really want Pulse View for doing the, the, the digital stuff. The old 1980 software for the digital analysis is really quite poor, but you need to be able to set up your set up that software and configure the USB ports so you can use it if you want to use it as, a, as an oscilloscope. So I hope that was useful and a bit of a, a live sort of demonstration, really, of a of an actual problem that uh, I would have struggled to solve if I'm honest without without the logic analyzer, simply because. I was convinced I was sending the number and I was convinced I should be reading the number and I'd looked at that bit of code for a while but sometimes you just your head just goes like fog and you just you just can't see for looking so so hopefully that was useful please like subscribe if you think this is useful lots of more more stuff stuff to come uh so like and subscribe thanks so much bye bye